All right. First off, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, uh, Bahashim, Rakakwadash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Uh, salutations and peace to the Akim who go out the four corners of the earth to teach this truth in all sincerity. Uh, Shalom, Mr. Brother Tawabash from the Great Millstone Northwest Camp. Uh, just coming back at you with another uh, another uh, sit down. Another uh, another week in Babylon, Slakia. No, these damn agents got our phones tapped and shit. But um, so yeah, just uh, going in on uh, you know, another video I watched. Uh, Slakia. Um, a video I watched on RT called NATO gathers 50,000 troops in Norway for biggest military exercise since the Cold War end. Um, but first I'm going to do a couple of scriptures. Uh, this is Jeremiah. Uh, we'll start at, uh, no, actually, uh, Matthew 16 and 2. He answered and said unto them, when it is evening, ye say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, verse 3, uh, and in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face, uh, the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs at the times? Right, so... This is Yahweh Shai answering uh, a question of some Pharisees and Sadducees, all right, wicked ones. A, uh, verse four: A wicked and adulterous generation seeking after a, seeketh after a sign, and there shall be no sign given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. So, you know, this is asking like, all right, so you know all this and that, and you know you want to scoff, but can you not tell the signs of the times? Like what time we're living in? Living in? And the only, and it's not going to be a sign of heaven. It's going to be the signs from the prophets, like Jonas was a prophet, right? So that's why we go out onto the highways and the byways. Um, that is why we uh, warn our people of the of the of the things to come, right? That's the whole purpose. That's the whole purpose of us going out and teaching is to uh, warn our people of the coming uh, judgment, right? So I'm going to get into this uh, uh, article. Some 50,000 troops will kick off NATO's biggest military exercise, exercise since the Cold War on Thursday in Norway. Trident Juncture 18, which runs until November 7th, is aimed at training the alliance to mobilize quickly to defend any ally under attack. The head of NATO, Allied, uh, Allied Joint Force Allied Joint Force Command, U.S. Admiral James Fogo, said the exercise was intended to show NATO is capable of defending against any, any adversary. AFP reports, not the particular country, anyone, Fogo added. Russia, which carried out its biggest ever military exercise in September in the Far East, has not been officially identified as the intended adversary. Russia does not represent a direct military threat to Norway, said the Norwegian Defense Minister Frank Bekea Jensen. Uh, while the exercise will take place at a distance from Norway, uh, 198 kilometers, uh, Norway's 198 kilometer border with Russia in the Arctic, Russia has expressed anger over the maneuvers. Right, so, you know, it's the signs of the times, man. We're getting closer and closer um, to to a world war, right? And the big one, you know, we're getting close to the big one. Let's see if I can find that one. Uh, 
let's start with. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Oh, snap. I lost one of my descriptions. I want it. Uh, what was the other one I wanted? It was uh, Salakia. And out. <clears throat> so, uh, Joel, three and two. And I will also also gather all nations and bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom I have scattered among the nations and parted my land. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Right? And that's, that's what's coming. Right? Gathering all nations into the, to the valley of uh, Yahweh's. It's uh, Jehoshaphat, which means uh, Yahweh's judgment. Yahweh's plot. One word I'm going to look up is this word, uh, oh, okay, plead, which is Shaphat. Uh, select Shapat and the word Shapat means uh, let's see where's the that's the outline I need the definition all right avenge that condemn contend defend execute judgment be a judge judgment needs plead reason or rule right so it's gonna be a judgment right the valley of the most highest judgment, right, is where he's going to gather all nations. <laughs> Salakia. And, uh, which is in, uh, go, you know, going to be in uh, Iran um, or in the Middle East area. And this is where World War Three will more than likely take place, which we believe this is where it's going to take place, according to the scriptures. Uh, I got another scripture real quick. Um, you know, it's the year of prophecy, so you know, prophecy is being fulfilled. Uh, this is Matthew 24 and 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am anointed or Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Right? And these, all of these are the beginning of sorrows. So World War III is close. They're already talking about an economic, e economic collapse. Right? And what comes with an economic collapse? Collapse, Famine, pestilence. Right? And then the Most High, you know, if you look up earthquakes, man, you can see earthquakes are happening daily throughout the whole world. <clears throat> So all of these things are taking place. All of these uh, prophecies are being fulfilled. Right? So it's only a matter of time before we're in World War III. Right? You can see the tension building up. The INF treaty is done. Right? What do you think that means? Arms race. And if they start building these weapons, you think they just build them for fun? Because they look cool? Nah, man. They're about to, man, we're about to go to war. Right? And these missiles are going to be aimed right here at this place. Right? And I got one more scripture before I jump up out of here. Um, and he gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon, which is Armageddon 1. Right? So let's look up that. Right? And this is how it's going to happen again. This is in the Greek, Armageddon. And definition... 
a symbolic name. Uh, mountain, uh, mountain of troops, right? Um, Har, uh, Harma, uh, Gadawan. Gadawan is a uh, is is Gad, like the tribe of Gad, which is troop. So mountain of troops, right? And this is all future prophecy for what's going on right now. All right, everything we're going through, everything we're seeing in the news, um, this idiot Trump being in office, like this is all the buildup for the show. And the show is, is World War III. And that is where two thirds of the nation of Israel, you Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians are going to be judged during this time and those that uh endure unto the end the same shall be saved as the scriptures say right but you have to be uh, predestined you have to be chosen uh for many are called but few are chosen right you have to be a part of that 144,000 12,000 from each tribe uh or or a part of the one third and most of the one third is going to be women and children and elderly so <clears throat> man And uh, I take that back with the elderly. It might, um, you know, mostly consist of uh, women and children because, uh, you know, brothers are going to need to to reproduce once we get in the kingdom, you know, uh, with, with Israelite women. Um, and it says the seven women, and the, at the end, that seven women shall cling to one man, right? So if each brother bringing in seven, there's 144,000 plus one third, there's going to be a lot of women. You know, because that 144,000 is men. Um, you know, and the faithful faithful women, you know, are going to be, uh, are, are, are going to be a part of um, that selection as well. Uh, the one third, the, the 144,000 uh, to be delivered, you know, the, the faithful women will be delivered at that time um, as well. And the children through their men, some wives through their husbands you know so um you know this is what we hasten hasting for this is why we uh you know do our, our our due diligence to go out in the highways and byways and tell these truths about world war three and about um famine of the word and famine of the food and and droughts and earthquakes in diverse places because it's what our ancestors did you know, it says that the prophets before me and before thee prophesied of, you know, of, of prophecy, prophecy of old, it's like you, um, prophesied against great, uh, against kingdoms and uh, against war and pestilence, right? So roughly paraphrasing, that's exactly uh, what we're supposed to be doing. Let me see if I can find that scripture. Jeremiah, yeah, I know that scripture. Jeremiah 28 and 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. Right? And so that's why we're going out and we're telling you <clears throat> it's high time to wake out of sleep, you know, as the scriptures say. Because, uh, you know, we have but a short time left before the Most High takes this place out. We don't know the day. You know, we just hasten in the day. You know, we're trying to be prepared for a thief that cometh at the night. You know, there's no way you could be prepared besides having having a, a body on watch. And we're not watching in fear of his coming. We're watching in, in the hasting of his coming. We believe and we want him to come. Lord willing, we're a part of that number, you know. But ultimately, we'll find out in that day when the Most High judges us. Right. But we believe, you know, we're hopeful and we know that uh, the truth lies with Great Millstone, you know. But with that, I want to wrap it up. You know, I don't want to make it too long. Uh, check out that that uh, article on RT. I read most of it, but uh, it's a pretty good article. Uh, the video is good, too, um, on, on uh, YouTube. But uh, with that, I'm going to say Shalom.